Hello and good afternoon and welcome to this second uh, of a four-part series on OSPF stub areas. And so the area that we're going to, or the, the OSPF stub area type that we're going to be taking a look at now here in part two is going to be the OSPF totally stubby area. So whereas before in our first video we took area one and we said we're going to make that a stub area, what we found out is that uh, as soon as we turn it into a stub area, that the ABR, which is router one here, that the ABR upon receiving that type five LSA that's being generated here, right? As soon as it receives that, the ABR is not going to inject a type four LSA for this type five LSA. And it's also not going to flood uh, the type 5 LSA into this area. So what we saw when we did the stubs was that for type 5, or I should say type 4 and type 5, those were not allowed. However, what did our ABR do when this was a stub area? Well, the ABR injects a type 3 default route. Because again, we've taken away the information as to how to get to the external routes in the network Therefore, the ABR is going to help us out and he's going to inject a type 3 because remember, the types that are still allowed are 1, 2, and 3 inside of a stub area. So now let's go ahead and take it one step further. We've decided that you know we want to shrink the size of the link state database and we still want to receive the inter area type 3s and that's when we're doing a stub. So what happens when I say I want this to be a totally totally stubby area, right? So we first did a stub, now we're gonna do a totally stubby area. And the totally stubby area says no type threes either. So type three, type four, and type five in a totally stubby area are not allowed. All right, so let's Let's take a look at that and let's see what happens. So because we're still gonna need some help, right? Because if I say there's no type threes allowed, that means it's not gonna give us a, um, it's, we're not gonna see any inner area routes. There's no type four, type fives allowed. So I have no information to get to any other routes other than intra area routes at that point. So let's see what that looks like. And we're also gonna take a look at one of the common misconceptions uh, with the configuration of this. So I'm on router three, so let's go into router OSPF one. And now for new learners, this is typically uh, a point of confusion here because what command am I going to issue on router three? Am I going to say uh, area one stub no summary? Or because I'm saying when I say no summaries, I'm saying I don't want any type threes, right? And that's what I just said the totally stubby area is going to do. However, and this is kind of a tomato tomato type argument, is I can simply put the exact same command that I used before on router three. Because remember, router three here is not an ABR. Router three is simply an OSPF member router who is in area one. He, router three is not an ABR. Router one is my ABR. So let's step over to router one. And actually, let me take that off real quick. And I wanna make sure that we take a look and the adjacency will come back up. It's gonna reset, there we go. So we're fully adjacent now. So if I say do show IP OSPF neighbors, right? Router three has one neighbor and one way to get out of this network, and that's through router one. If I say do show IP route, the routing table is gonna look exactly as it did before when we took a look at the stub routing feature. I've got my inter area routes here, my OIAs, and now I have my OSPF external that's being redistributed there from router six. Now let me go ahead, I'm just gonna simply say area one stub. Now again, that's the same command that I ran, not when I was doing a totally stubby area, but when I just wanted to say it was a stub. So let's come over here to router one. You can see that our adjacency 
if I were to say show IP OSPF neighbors on router one, you can see that the adjacency is still there. And let's see, do show run section OSPF area one stub. Did I not take? Oh, there we go. I had to wait for the dead timer. A little impatient there. <laughs> I thought it was going to go down quicker. All right, so the dead timer has expired. So now when I say show IP OSPF neighbors, the dead timer has expired. And again, I pulled that up. I missed that right there. So the dead timer has expired. Now the adjacency between router 3 and router 1 is down, right? So if I were to on router 1, and again, remember, we want to make this a totally stubby area, which means no type 1s, no, oh, I'm sorry, no type 3s, no type 4s, no type 5s, right? So I'm going to go into router OSPF 1, and it's here where I say area 1 stub no summary, right? Now, it's something very interesting. I can put that command, that same command, I can put over on router 3, and it's not going to break anything. However, it's not required. And so again, the purist is going to say, put the no summary option only at the ABR, because the ABR is the one who is going to deny the flooding and the injecting of the type 3, type 4, and type 5s, right? So where do I need that no summary? I have to have it on the ABR. Because again, if I don't put no summary here, what do we, what do we end up with? We don't end up with a totally stubby area. We end up with what we saw in our first video, which is just simply a stub area, right? So I have to have it at the ABR, so that's where it should be. And that's what the purist is going to say, that you wouldn't put that on router 3, right? Because router 3 is not the ABR. It doesn't do or add any additional functionality, and it doesn't fix or break the configuration. So since it's not needed, let's leave it off of router 3. We know we're going to need it on the ABR because this is what differentiates uh, the stub command that we saw in the first video, and this makes it a totally stubby area. So now, let's take a look and see, and there we go, we see our adjacencies back up, so I'm going to say do show IP OSPF neighbor, right? So neighbor uh, uh, router 3 is back in our adjacency table. So now let's come over to router 3 and say do show IP route. And what do we see? So we're not seeing any inter area routes with the exception of the default route. And this is critical, right? So the ABR is still going to inject a default route for us because we've said that we're a totally stubby area so I don't want to see any more inter area routes because remember what did the routing table look like before we had these three inter area routes and we had the type 5 uh, external route from the 192.168 right so what does our routing table look like now now we've got a default route that's automatically uh, injected into area one for us from the ABR. If I were to say do show IP OSPF uh, database summary, right? Type three summary LSAs for inter area routes. What does it look like? So here we go. The link state ID for 0000, which is our summary network number. That is our default route out of the environment and the advertising router for that route is router one. And that is the router ID for router one right there. So as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, it, as you can see, the advertising router is router one. That's who we're getting the default route from. And it's allowed to inject only that inter area type three route into area one. All other inner area routes, as we just saw, right? We had those three routes that were up here previously. Those are gone. So all we're going to get 
is that single type three, no, no other inner area type threes, no type fours, no type fives. We're not going to see any type sevens because that'll be, we'll talk about NSSAs here shortly. So again, uh, this, as you can see, even further reduces the size of the link state database and really trims down what we're able to, uh, to see with respect to routes. But again, the use case is that we have one way out of the network anyway. So I'm gonna have to go out serial 000, so why not simply set this up as a totally stubby area and force router three to simply take in that single default route and again, if he had intra-area routes, I would see those. And this is why you have to have this default route here. Because without that route, I have no way to get to anything other than intra-area routes. Let's step over to router four here real quick. And on router four, which is on the far right side of our far right side of our drawing here, we're gonna take a look at router four. And you can see router four has a very similar setup. It's area two, so it's not the backbone area. And if I issue the show IP route command, take a look at what router four sees. He sees the three inter area routes, and he sees this external, right? This type five LSA. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing that we just did for area one. However, this time I'm gonna show you that you can use that no summary option on router four or on the router that would be considered uh, the router that only has one way out of the network. So if I were to say router OSPF one, area two, stub, no summary. And this is gonna tear the adjacency down, right? It's gonna be forced to reset. And then I'm gonna jump onto router seven and we're gonna say, whoops, oh, I should have no, uh, the domain lookup. I didn't set that prior to the video starting here. So let me step back over to router four. So you can see that the adjacency has been forced to reset. If I do a show IP route now, I see no OSPF routes at all. All right, so we're back here on router seven. So if I go into global config and say router OSPF one, router OSPF one, and I say area two stub no summary. So I've placed it onto both, right? Because again, it, it, this, this can be a confusing point. When you see it in documentation, you typically look at it and you're like, well, wait a second. How come the stub router with only one way out, it just says stub, but the ABR says stub no summary. And this can be confusing when you're talking about the different area types. So again, if it's a stub area, right, just a straight up OSPF stub, we put area, and I'll use area one here as the example, area one uh, stub, right? And that goes on both the ABR and the member router. If I'm doing a totally stubby area, on the ABR, I wanna make sure I put area, and we'll do two, right? Area two stub, no summary on the ABR. Because that tells the ABR that not only are type four and type fives not allowed in here, but type three inter-area routes are no longer allowed to be injected into the area with the single exception that we saw, which is our default route, because we have to be able to get out of the network. And so we still get that uh, default route injected. So let me pull router four up here. You can see that we're back up. So if I were to say do show IP route, I've lost all of those other three inter-area type three summary routes. They're gone, that information's gone. And what am I left with? I'm simply left with a single uh, default route here, which is going to be a type three. This is the only type three, it's the exception, and it's allowed in because I have to be able to get out of my network. If I say do show IP OSPF database, let's look at our link state database. As you can see, uh, pretty sparse, right? We've got our router link state, which is our type one LSA. And then we have the single summary link state, which is that default route. And again, point to point network here, so no type twos. So what we would see here in a totally stubby area, type one, 
Type 2 if it's multi-access. And you're going to see a single enter area type 3, which is going to be that default route that gets automatically generated for us. And so at this point, we've taken a look at the OSPF stub area. We've taken a look at the OSPF totally stubby area. And the two major differences you've got with the stub area, right? Well, let's, let's just say that this is a stub area here for now. So if this is a stub, there are no type fours or fives, right? No type fours or fives in a stub. If it's a totally stubby area, no type three type four, type five LSAs with the exception of our default route. And again, it's on the ABR, right? For a stub area, we would simply use the stub keyword and the stub keyword, right? When we say area and it'll be two, I would say stub on both, right? Again, we're saying that right now, suspending reality here, we did the totally stubby, but we're just saying that this is area two is a stub. I would say area two stub on both of these routers, the ABR and the member router. However, for a totally stubby area, I need to say area one stub and then exactly what I'm looking for. No summaries, right? No summary. And that goes on the ABR and I can still get away over here on the member router. I can do either one. I can say area one stub, no summary, or I can just simply say, it's my other alternative here, I can say area one stub. And again, the purist is gonna argue that on router three, that's the command that should be entered, right? And this is showing an understanding of the fact that it's only at the ABR where the no summary keyword is required because it's the ABR that's gonna flood those inner area routes in here if I don't have the no summary keyword, right? And again, on the member router, we don't need to say, there's no need to say no summary. It doesn't break it, it doesn't fix anything, doesn't give us any additional functionality. So remember that, and you'll, again, you'll see in documentation, typically in documentation, you're gonna see area one stub because this is the technically, you know, quote unquote, technically correct way to set this up, right? And it's at the ABR that you say no summary. All right, so this concludes our second video. And we've talked about now the OSPF stub area. We've talked about the OSPF totally stubby area. And again, the easy way to remember it is when you say it's totally stubby, you're not letting type three, type four, type fives in there. When it's a stub, you're saying, yeah, I'll still take those inner area routes, the type threes, but there's gonna be no type fours, no type fives, right? And so that's the difference. All right, I appreciate you watching. I hope that this is uh, made the stub area and the totally stubby area a little more clear. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna step into the OSPF not so stubby area, and then we're gonna take a look at the totally not so stubby area. All right, thanks for watching and have a great night.